we have to get over these uh, production barriers. And we've, uh, this, is, this diagram was written in our first business plan, and, uh, and so we've moved quite a ways along here towards uh, crude peptide isolation, pure peptide isolation, chemical modification, getting exclusive licenses as we go from the uh, university to, to practice these things. And then uh, as we go on, one of the things uh, um, um, you may have heard of, there's a pilot plant been started up at the University of Saskatchewan. There was a number of the, uh, of the, the people in the uh, College of Agriculture uh, were involved in it, and, uh, including myself, and we've established that pilot plant so that it is, uh, is capable of doing the purification of a number of compounds, and it happens to, to work quite well, you know, amongst other things, for uh, the purification of peptides. So uh, when, when I mentioned that, uh, that we had produced a significant amount of peptides for research progress projects, that's part of this uh, scaling up with university facilities trying to get to zero to 50 kilograms a year. As we uh, uh, develop this, there's going to be needs to uh, uh, work with partners that might be selling nutraceuticals and, uh, in prominent markets. I've just uh, mentioned uh, China. And looking at uh, global industry partners uh, you know, that might be able to supply us with the raw material to make peptides. And during this whole thing, as we're going from this side, peptide target price, to this side, you know, we're, we're going to be seeing the peptide price fall. So it falls within the, the range of the markets we're targeting. We're going to um, enhance the IP. We'll focus on IP development that, um, that increases the use of peptides in health-promoting products. We can't carry much more across that valley of death than, than those that, uh, and so we're going to focus on nutraceutical, cosmetic, veterinary, and pharmaceutical applications. Some of these are, are, are easier to get into than others. Um, we're certainly not in the position to uh, make a pharmaceutical and, and carry it into, uh, in, into those markets. That's not, uh, that's not where we're coming from that. But we're looking at, uh, at these, uh, these range of things and trying to uh, get a, a marketplace in them. What we don't plan to do, because we're going to end up diluting ourselves, we're not going to uh, go into the field of flax oil processing. There's lots of people out there crushing flax and, uh, and, and making quality uh, flax oil products. It turns out that when you crush oil, uh, flax, you get the oil out of it. If you recover the peptides, you get a better oil. So that's actually part of our, our intellectual property, is actually that the oil is better. If you're making a finishing material, the oil's better. If you're making a, a, a food material, the oil doesn't taste as bitter. So the, uh, the, the, um, the, the removing the peptides from flax make a superior oil product. And so we're going to work with the, the, the producers of flax oil, be they small, medium, large, to try and get enough uh, of oil to get the peptides for the needs of, of whatever customer base we're able to establish. And uh, for, for the meantime, we'll also be seeking to look at the, the flax germplasm to uh, improve it as a peptide uh, production platform. So we're looking at flax germplasm development. We're uh, hoping to engage that with uh, those, uh, those entities that are doing flax breeding, um, possibly doing some uh, flax culture, um, growing new varieties, and looking at uh, conventional breeding, possibly double haploids. And uh, we've already been in discussion with, uh, with people in the flax industry. And we're hoping that uh, the next time a big plot of flax is grown out in the field like this and test plots, that uh, there'll be uh, lines that have been selected for uh, high levels of peptides and uh, other valuable products. <laughs>